Hey guys, welcome back. I've got a special treat for you today. For those of you interested in Luminar Neo, this is a preview of three key new awesome tools that are coming in Luminar Neo. Now I want to point out this is a tech demo version, meaning it is not feature complete. It's not performance optimized. It doesn't have everything in it. It literally has three tools in it. So it's like a, an abridged, it's, it's a sliver of Luminar Neo, but I've got it. I'm going to share it with you and we're going to walk through using these three different tools so I can demonstrate to you how they work on your images because this is cool stuff. This is some of the stuff that we've been waiting for. I'm going to show it to you right now. Let's get going. Here's the interface. Now, I also want to be clear, this is because it's not final. That means the interface is not final. This is going to look familiar to you if you use Luminar AI, which I've talked about in other videos. That knowledge is going to transfer. It's going to have a familiar look and feel. So if you're taking advantage of the Black Friday offers, which are down below, which allows you to get Luminar AI today with Luminar Neo when it's ready, you're not going to lose out by learning Luminar AI first. You're going to take that knowledge with you when you come over to Neo. So keep that in mind. So the interface is familiar. Things are on the left for the catalog. Again, not feature complete, not final. It may change. I don't know. But what I want to talk about is three basic things. The first one is going to be power line removal. The second one is going to be dust spot removal. And the third one is going to be relight AI. Cool stuff. I've got a photo here. I'm going to go ahead and click edit and take me over there. And as you can see in the tool well, there's literally erase and relight. And just as I suspected in my last video, um, power line removal and dust spot removal are components within the erase tool. So they work quite well. I would say that in my experience so far, power line removal is really good most of the time. Dust spot removal is fantastic. I'm going to continue to provide feedback to them. And again, it's not ready for prime time. So just keep that in mind, but uh, they will continue to optimize things. But here's an iPhone shot that I took in Oregon a while back. And as simple as it is, if you want to remove power lines, you just click that button one time, give it a second, power lines are removed. And in fact, over here in the filter, it tells you, it says power lines are removed. Now, if you look at the before and after, you can see that some things um, look really good. It's nice and clean over here, but the top of this sign, a little bit of that disappeared. And so here's a cool thing about this tool is there's this restore button. So all you got to do, by the way, if you hold down the backslash key, you can see the before and after. So if you look across the sky, I mean, those power lines are gone. I think it looks nice and clean. If you look at the one over uh, the two on the right, and uh, as it comes across the building right over here, uh, over this street sign, if you look at that, I mean, that looks nice and clean. So I'm really impressed with that. But like I said, one more time, if you look at the top of this sign, it cuts some of that off. So here's what you do. You already have the mouse. You just come over here and you just paint over what has been removed that you want to bring back. And you just kind of highlight that a little bit. And then you click this handy restore button and it brings it back. Now, take a look at it. Some of the power lines have crossed over that sign. So this is an example of where you need to do uh, a couple of things. Number one, zoom in. Uh, number two, get the erase button again and erase carefully. And number three, take your time. Zooming in is super important because these are small, minor things that you got to be zoomed in to see. But if you look overall at the before and after, you can see the power line removal. And look at all the mess on the left. It's cleaned up nicely. Now, if I zoom in, I would say this is where I notice sometimes, you know, it's not ideally perfect. There's a little bit of artifact in there. But hey, guess what? I can also use the erase tool. So I could come in here and do things like that and then hit erase and see what happens to it. And it's cleaned it up a little bit, right? So keep that in mind. You have the ability to further refine or adjust if you want to, um, like you would need to go do that some around here. But I wanted to point out restore and that you can continue to customize it. And also just to point out that honestly, I mean, it's not perfect, no. But I mean, if you started with that and I'm at that already and all I did is click one button, that has saved me, that's a minimum of 10 minutes probably um, to even get that good of a result. So I think that's a major time saver. I'm pretty excited about this and I'm sure they'll continue to refine the algorithms around this tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that. And now we're gonna go look at dust spot removal. Okay, here we go. This photo has got a lot of spots on it. As I've told you in previous videos, I got countless photos that look like this. But the good news is I, I just click once on erase and I click once on remove dust spots and then they're gonna look like that, which is without all the dust spots. 
Now, this is a particularly dusty image, and if I zoom in, you will see that up here in the right-hand corner, there's still a little bit of remnants that need to be removed. I can also, by the way, with Structure AI negative structure, you can brush that in to smooth out the sky. That helps remove spots. I don't know if you've ever noticed that, but I've noticed that. I've done that plenty of times, but notice it didn't get that tree branch, but all these other spots that were in the sky, look at all these on the left-hand side and in the sky, and if I uh, you know, after, before, and after. I mean, you're seeing a massive difference. I see a little artifact there. Again, I could come in, and just like with the power lines, I can further refine with the erase uh, tool itself by brushing over. The other thing I wanted to point out in this one is there's actually dust spots in the water, and it's captured those quite well also. So I'm pretty excited about that. I feel like this tool is really doing a great job, and frankly, that, that amount of work that many dust spots on a photo like this that has so many of them, it could easily be 10 or 15 minutes of just taking those out. And instead, it's two click. I click to open the erase tool and I click on dust spot removal and you know they're mostly gone, right? So I'm really excited about this. I, I would say this one is particularly spotty, like especially in that upper right-hand corner and it didn't get them all. Again, not a finished product, but I think it did a great job. And in a lot of other photos that I've tested it with, where it only had a few spots, it's gotten them quite, you know, basically perfectly. So I'm using this one in the video because I consider it a particularly challenging image, but I wanted to point out the tool is not perfect 100% of the time, but it's pretty darn close in my experience so far. So I'm excited about that. And now I want to show you Relight AI, which I can actually just do on this tool, or excuse me, on this photo. So here's the base photo. As is typical with shots like this, when you're shooting at sunset, because this, the light is in the sky, right? The sun, it's brighter. The foreground is darker. Well, here is Relight AI. So you got brightness near and far. This is how you um, adjust the amount of light increase you're doing in either the near portion of the photo or the far portion. And depth, as the name implies, is how far are you, um, where is the boundary between the two, right? How far are you dragging the brightness near up into the photo? Let me show you, it'll make more sense when I drag the slider. So I'm gonna drag this to 100 just to do that. And as you can see, it doesn't look like it's made a massive difference except in the water. And that's because I haven't done any depth. So the depth defaults to 50, but when I start dragging the depth, you will see that that light increase is creeping up onto the buildings and I'm going to 100. It's basically now crept up all the way. And so now I've brightened that entire foreground considerably. So if I do the before and after, you can see there's the before and there's the current state. Now the brightness far, I could adjust as well. So that was mostly gonna be the sky. I don't think I really wanna do that in this photo, maybe just a tiny bit, but that's how that's working. The cool thing is, if you have any subjects that need dehaloing, like a portrait, you can use that. That will help sort of shape and wrap the light around your subject. And then warmth near or far is basically a temperature control for the section that's classified as near, based on what you did up here, or the section classified as far, also based on what you did up there. So warm near, let's say I wanna warm it up, I'm just gonna warm up the part of the photo that I added light to with the brightness near and the depth. And then same with uh, warm far, I'm gonna do that. Those are not the colors I would go with. I actually might go a little bluer here, I think. I think I would do that. And frankly, I would use a number of other color tools that are awesome in Luminar, like Golden Hour, Color Balance, obviously the Develop tab, uh, Develop uh, Module, that sort of thing. So that's how Relight AI works. Let me show you on another photo example. Okay, like I said, I'm really excited about this tool. I've got a lot of shots like this where, you know, you've got some kind of foreground element and it's not very well lit. And of course the sky is lit. So this was a sunset in Copenhagen. This couple was walking toward me. And what I wanna do is brighten it up. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna go to 100 to show you what it's doing. Um, I'm not saying 100 is the way to go. I'm using the, an extreme example here. But if you look at that at 100, you can see what it's done. It is human aware. It's recognized the humans and said, oh, they're part of the foreground. Let me include them in this brightening. That's probably what Jim is up to here. Um, and then with depth, I can take that and I can just drag that. And you can see it's picking out that building as well. And I'm not seeing any real brightening in the sky. There's the before and there's the after. It's done an amazing job of doing the foreground, the people, the buildings, and the dome, right? Even the steeple or the top part of the dome. There it is before, 
and there it is now. So again, 100 may be a bit much, but I wanted to point that out as an example because I think it's done a fantastic job of allowing me to really shape the light. And then once again, I can do the warmth near or far if I need to, or if there's some dehaloing, you can see how that's kind of adjusting. Let me zoom in a little bit. I don't actually think they're, yeah. They're not that much in focus, but if I drag the D-halo left and right, you can see that the light is kind of adjusting around the subject a little bit. So this is, I think it defaults to 30. This is something that you just play with and experiment with, but it will help you shape and kind of wrap the light around what, what appears to be foreground elements uh, in my experience so far. So as you can imagine, this is taking advantage of their 3D depth mapping technology. So in other words, it works best in a scene where there is already some depth that would allow it to recognize the near and far components and allow you to adjust the depth as well. I wanted to show you one more example, also an iPhone shot. I'm gonna go ahead and click remove power lines. That's a mess of power lines, and yet I think it did a really good job. Now, again, there's a little bit of artifacts. I see a little bit of an artifact here on this line, but if you look at the before and after, I mean, look how many lines there were um, all the way down to the left side, and yet it's taken them out. There's a couple of spots where I think it needs to be refined over here, and it took out the top of this street light thing. The other thing is this uh, big section here that's like a transformer. You would need to come in and kind of paint over that and erase that yourself, and then just hit erase to take it out, and it's gone. And I think it did a great job of removing that. So there could be some refinements depending on what it's classifying as a power line, but if you look at the before and after, again, just a massive mess of wires, and after, much cleaner, much better, a little bit of artifacts. Like I said, it's not perfect, but I think, honestly, out of the gate, this is a pretty amazing tool, and I'm excited to be using it. That's really it for this uh, preview, my friends. I hope it's given you some insights into what's coming in Luminar Neo as soon as I'm able to and have more stuff to share. I'll be back here, so if you haven't yet, be sure and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you soon, my friends. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves, and until then, adios.